All right, I'm here. Twitch.tv slash 110sports, 110sportsmedia.com slash live. Thank you so much for joining us on a Wednesday. My name is Josh. This is the J Mole Show, part of the 110 Sports Network. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day, whether that's live over at twitch.tv slash 110 sports or on YouTube or in podcast forum. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day at 110 sports. It is a big day in the NBA. Huge day in the NBA. Uh, it's you usually don't have this this weird day of, you know, all these these trades and 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 everything is so jumbled that everything is sort of happening at the same time and as a result you get these really wild days whoa just going wild you've got these really awesome these really awesome trades that have turned either uh young bright future teams into immediate home court advantage contenders in the west or you've got teams like the milwaukee bucks who have made moves to if nothing else make it clear to Giannis that that they're invested in winning that they're invested in making a team better and they're invested in keeping him around and then on top of all of that you have the fact that nobody really knows who the number one overall pick is going to be like not really I've seen, you know, there seems to be some narrowing in on, and most of the trade, most of the mock drafts I've seen today and yesterday, whether it's the Ringer and Kevin O'Connor or uh, Jonathan Gavoni over at ESPN, it seems like Edwards Wiseman ball is the, is the top three, but the, the Knicks have been very, very busy this morning and and it, we don't really know what could happen uh, when it comes to the top picks in this year's draft. And that just makes it exciting. I mean, when we have things like that, we have, you know, somebody like Jalen Brown is taken third when he's not supposed to be taken before seventh like he was a few years ago. And, and, and while there are – there's not a clear – they're, they're, pretty much everybody has a flaw, and you're not entirely sure how everybody's going to work, um, whether that's at the top, and you have Anthony Edwards, who certainly, I mean, I read some quotes this morning about him, like, really not being that into basketball, and and him, you know, football being his first love, and he can't really watch basketball, and all these things that you don't really want to hear from a guy that you're about to, that, that you could hypothetically be about to draft number one overall now for the Timberwolves that seems like the most logical choice um considering his fit considering they don't need a point guard because they have D'Angelo Russell uh, and they certainly don't need one in LaMelo Ball who can't shoot it and who's best with the ball in his hands um Wiseman it doesn't look like the Timberwolves have ever been all that interested in Wiseman feels like the the way that Wiseman is drafted number one if if, is if Charlotte decides they need to trade up to get him at one. But we'll talk. We'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the draft here in a few minutes. But I want to start with some of the trades that have gone down in the last few days or so. Uh, a couple of days ago uh, on Monday, actually after after the show, we had one of the bigger trades. Uh, of the offseason and unless James Harden uh, it, it, the Rockets and the Nets can come to some sort of agreement about James Harden we could be uh, it, it, it will be really hard to trump this trade in terms of impact on a team impact on a roster and sorry and, and impact on the ceiling of a team Chris Paul's a Phoenix Sun, and that's not something I was expecting to say. It's something, I will say this, it's something I always liked. I liked the idea of Chris Paul being the starting point guard in Phoenix. I just wasn't sure it was ever going to happen, but it did. Uh, the Suns sent Ty Jerome, Jalen LeCue, Kelly Oubre Jr., 
and Ricky Rubio and a 2022 first round pick to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Abdel Nader and Chris Paul. The most the most interesting part of this and, and it probably comes down to the fact that that Chris Paul is older, that Chris Paul has a ridiculous contract, that Chris Paul is about to be in year 16, year 15, excuse me. But they didn't have to give up Cam Johnson. They didn't have to give up DeAndre Ayton, which they were never going to give up, or or Booker, they were never going to give him up either. But they didn't have to give up Cam Johnson. They didn't have to give up Michael Bridges, who was one of my uh, one of my favorite young players in the NBA. Six eight, long, can shoot it, um, plays really solid defense. Uh, you know, in, in 2018 when he was drafted. Uh, the the Sixers actually drafted Bridges and then traded him to the Suns for Zaire Smith. And Zaire Smith? Who's he? Exactly. Um, no offense to Zaire Smith, but Zaire Smith has played a total of 13 games for the, set, for the Sixers. And while he probably always had the higher ceiling... Michael Bridges definitely had the lower floor. He played in all 82 games as a as a rookie, starting 56 of them, uh, and then played in 73 games in Phoenix in his second year. I really thought that any trade that that Phoenix could make to immediately raise the ceiling of their team as much as a guy like Chris Paul would raise the ceiling would involve drafting so it would involve giving up somebody like Michael Bridges not only did they not have to give up him or Cam Johnson they also didn't have to give up the 10th pick in this year's draft they have to get they had to give up a 2022 first round pick but listen if this works if this goes well which is not all that ridiculous to think about that could be just not a good pick in 2022 we could be talking about a 2022 first round pick that's 24th or you know it, it, outside of the top 20 now the thunder have everybody and their mothers first round picks i mean I, someone said on a podcast i was listening to yesterday that sam presti could get the first second and third picks if he really wanted to with the assets that he has that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration but not a massive one not a massive one in the slightest because they have so many first round picks. I think it's something like 17 over the next six years or something, which is just absolutely preposterous. They've got a, you know, a handful of them this year, but, but this immediately, here's a couple of reasons why I like this. I don't like this because this immediately makes the Suns a contender because that's, I, I, that's, I don't think is actually the case that gets them a lot closer. And if this works, if this works and you can get Chris Paul to come, and I believe I'm going to look it up right now. I, I don't remember off the top of my head where Chris Paul's contract stands, but I believe it's a player option after this season. And then he's a restricted, so it's a player option for the 21, 22 season. And then he's an unrestricted free agent after the 2021, 22 season. If you can get him to pick up that player option and at $44.2 million per, for that year, there's no way he doesn't, right? Especially if 2020 and especially if the upcoming season goes well, I can't I can't think of a reason why he wouldn't why he would want out of there unless it's just some sort of super team somebody's trying to put together or whatever it might be. But but here's a couple of things. First, I think, you know, Devin Booker last year averaged like 26 points. I'm going to give you the exact numbers right now. 26.6 points, 6.5 assists, 4.2 rebounds. He only shot 35% from the three-point line. I, I say only 35% because, because Devin Booker has turned into the shot creator playmaker that I don't think anybody thought he was going to be in this league. He was drafted 10th overall or whatever it was, 13th overall by the Suns in the 2015 draft because you thought he was going to be a guy that was always going to be able to knock down shots. 
that's what he was at Kentucky and that team that went to to the national championship game. And, and that's what it looked like he was going to be in the league. He shot 41% at Kentucky in his, his lone year. That just looked like what he was going to be. And he turned into this this scorer who takes 19 shots a game. He takes 17.2 on average for his career. And he and he assists because he's got so he has the ball in his hands so much. Now you've got a guy that can take the ball out of Booker's hands. And and not completely, but but we can talk about Chris Paul's emotions. We can talk about his moodiness. We can talk about how he likes to yell at teammates. We can talk about how he's never really delivered on the biggest stages of basketball. All of those are, are, are valid arguments. But what we cannot argue about is that Chris Paul makes teammates better. Without a doubt, Chris Paul makes teammates better. Chris Paul will make Devin Booker better because now Devin Booker is going to be able to do things like run off more screens because it's not Ricky Rubio in the backcourt. Ricky Rubio is a fine point guard. He's nowhere close to Chris Paul. And Chris Paul, in terms of setting teammates up, making plays for other people, is is one of the best we've seen in the last 20 years. It's just true. And I and 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 if you know me, you know that I'm not a Chris Paul fan. I I if you ask me to pick a guy to be my point guard of a team trying to win a championship, Chris Paul would be up there because he's that good. But Chris Paul would not be number one. No, no shot. And and he lets his emotions get to, to the best of him. And, and and especially in the way that he likes to yell and get moody when things aren't going well. I got issues with Chris Paul. But there's no doubt that he makes everybody on this team better. And and this is a team that that according to basketball reference last year was a respectable defensive team. Not great, but respectable. They were they were 12th in offensive rating, 17th in defensive rating. So not great, but not horrible. They ended up going, you know, they win those eight games at the end of the year uh, in the bubble. What we what we learned is that there really is a bright future there. And the future just got, <laughs> you just got a lot closer to the sun, no pun intended. Because, of course, this turns this team into a we-need-to-win quickly because Chris Paul, like I said, 15th season, he's getting up there in age. Uh, last year he was healthy for most of the year, but two years, the two years prior, he had some injury issues. Um, but this team immediately turns into a team that can contend for a home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. They're not, they're not close to the Lakers. I don't think they're, you know, expecting them to have a better record than the, the Nuggets or the Clippers, I think is, is, at least unfair at this point, and and I would probably throw the Warriors, a Warriors team in there who's who's got something to prove in the sense that they are still a basketball team that deserves respect in terms of title contenders, but somewhere between four and six is somewhere is something that the Suns can absolutely achieve. You've got a, a, a point guard, a leader, a and a guy who doesn't take nonsense on the defensive end and Chris Paul. I think that's a big part of this too. You've got him. You've got Devin Booker, who's one of the best scorers in the NBA. DeAndre Ayton, one of the best young centers in the NBA. Hopefully Aaron Baines comes back. He is a free agent, but hopefully he comes back. I think that's. I think it would be a mistake if the Suns didn't find a way to sign him back. Michael Bridges, Cam Johnson. I like I like this basketball team. You've got the number ten pick in the draft. Maybe you go get a guy like like Devin Vassell to sort of solidify the wings behind Cam Johnson and Michael Bridges. You know, maybe it's Devin Vassell, maybe it's Sadiq Bay, maybe it's um Isaac Okoro, Isaac Okoro, I don't think Okoro will be there at 10, but I do think that there are guys that they can go get there. Maybe it's a 
Kira Lewis type player to solidify the backcourt because you know right now it's Cameron Payne behind Chris Paul because Ricky Rubio was let go because Ty Jerome was part of that trade as well. Uh, they they need some depth in that backcourt, especially with a guy like um, with a guy like Chris Paul that every once in a while is prone to injury, and as he gets older, will become more prone to injury. If somehow Killian Hayes falls to them at ten. That's the that kid that is the type of guy that can be the point guard of the future for the Suns. I think he, uh, but you know, Kira Lewis would be an interesting pick there as well. There are a lot of ways that they could go and hopefully make their team better. Now, if I was if I was betting and and if we look at this mock draft from Jonathan Cavoni right now at ten, they have the he has the Suns drafting Sadiq Bay. I like that a lot. I'm also a really massive Sadiq Bay fan. 6'8", 216, can knock it down, can, you know, can knock it down a three-pointer with the best of them in this draft and and is going to be a lockdown defender in this league. And when you get rid of Kelly Oubre Jr. and you you need some some help, uh, it, it just with wing depth, and, and that would that would do that. But I, I really like this pick for... I really like this trade for the Suns, uh, and, and I'm really intrigued to see what the product they put on the floor is because it could be really good, and it's definitely going to be exciting. But f- for the first time, we might be talking about a you know a bright future Suns that is a bright now Suns, and that's and, and that just adds to this jumbled mess of teams that expect to succeed in in the west next year and now it's not just a sun's team that's competing for the eight spot in the in the west it's a sun's team competing for a top four for a for you know the back half of the home court advantage seeds somewhere in the middle four to six somewhere in there and that just that means that somebody else is is gonna miss out next season on on the playoffs uh coming up next we'll talk some nba draft i want to talk about the bucks but we'll we'll take a quick break Real quick before we do that, um, you're watching the Jamal Show, 110 Sports Media. dot com.
Welcome back to the Jamble Show on a Wednesday. Twitch.tv slash 110sports, 110sportsmedia.com slash live. Listen, right back here, twitch.tv slash 110sports. Uh, tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 110 Sports is going live. Myself, the host of Touchline Talk, Josh Doring, the host of Around the Bases, Chris Brown. We're going live with a NBA draft show, uh, a hangout, a watch party kind of thing. And and while it's not going to be, of course, we ourselves aren't allowed to actually stream the draft because, you know, obvious. Um we are going to have a watch party. We're going to have the, a draft board up. We're going to talk about the best players left. We're going to react to every pick. We're going to keep track of trades. And and if you want a place to come hang out, I want a place to, to talk about the the draft, I think we're actually going to open up our Discord link Excuse me to the rest of uh, – to the public and have people jump in and out to talk about the draft. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So twitch.tv slash 110sports tonight if you're watching this uh, sometime on Wednesday, November 18th. Uh, twitch.tv slash 110sports uh, NBA draft. NBA draft watch party, NBA draft show. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun, and you should join us uh, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Uh, we talked about the Suns, but the other team making moves, and the other team you know making moves that so of course we're talking about the Bucks. And I think the Bucks in the last 72 hours have created a really really strong case to present to Giannis when it comes to signing a Supermax extension. That's what this is about first and foremost. You might say, "Oh man, giving up Eric Bledsoe, George Hill and three first round picks for for Drew Holiday is a lot." And and on the surface, the, the that's true. It's absolutely a lot for Drew Holiday, but it's kind of like looking at what the Thunder had to get, the Clippers had to give up to get Paul George. It was pretty clear that Kawhi said, "I'm only coming if you get Paul George. That's who I want. Go get him, and I'll come." So what you have to look at that as if you're the Clippers, you're looking at that as, yes, okay, the transaction history is going to say we gave up our entire future and Shea Gilgis-Alexander for Paul George. But in the Clippers' front office head, it's okay, we gave up all of our future and Paul jo- and Shea Gilgis-Alexander for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And then it starts to get a little bit more justified. We can have a conversation about Paul George. I don't like Paul George. Paul George is a loser and and hasn't won anything significant in the NBA and just pisses people off. So we can have a conversation later if you want to about why that was the wrong choice for Kawhi Leonard. But the point being is that they wanted Kawhi and Kawhi said, go get Paul George and I'm coming. So they did. And, 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 and the Bucks front office is going to look at this in a similar way. We sent a message to Giannis. We went out and got Bogdan Bogdanovich from the Kings. We went out and and, and got Drew Holiday from the Pelicans. We gave you these two guys that are going to help with off ball shooting, which has been because now you can throw a, a, a now you can throw a lineup out there that's Bogdanovich, Holiday, Middleton, three shooters, three shooters. We all know how good Middleton is from beyond the arc. Uh, Bogdanovich last year shot 37.2% from beyond the arc and Drew Holiday shot somewhere around that mark as well. Probably a little better. Uh, okay, a little bit worse. But when you have a guy like Giannis, uh, when you have a bunch of shooters, I think it's not unfair to expect both of those stats to go up next season. But they look at these trades that they've made. And say, okay, now we have, now we've proven to Giannis that we're interested, that we're invested in keeping him around, that we're invested in winning, and we're showing him that we're willing to go out and make the sacrifices to do it. Because listen, <laughs> you gave up Eric Bledsoe, you gave up George Hill, you gave up Dante DiVincenzo, you gave up DJ Wilson, and you gave up Ersan Ilyasova. That's a lot of bodies. 
and, and some of those guys, you know, Eric, but you know, George Hill, Dante G- DiVincenzo, and Ilyasova in particular. Those are were were pretty important pieces of your of your bench rotation last season. If we go look at last year's stats, DiVincenzo. 66 games, 23 minutes a game. George Hill, 21 minutes per game. Ilyasova, 15 minutes per game. Eric Bledsoe, 27 minutes per game. Wesley Matthews, I believe it was purported that Wesley Matthews opted out of his contract. So, you know, he could be re-signed, but he could not. The point I'm making here is... Is that who who play, who comes off the bench for this basketball team? Because you've got Giannis, Chris Middleton, Bogdanovich, Holiday, and and Brooke Lopez. That's a great starting five. It is great starting five. A lot of shooters that you've put around Giannis now, because Brooke Lopez can take can step out and knock down that shot as well. A lot of good shooters around Giannis, which is what you desperately needed in Milwaukee. Brooke Lopez, a a respectable shooter. You have to guard him. But who's going to come off the bench? Because when you look after that, when you look after that, there's nobody. Looking at Giannis' brother. Robin Lopez. So you got, and, and they, they'll they probably, you know, we'll see about Wesley Matthews. They'll, they'll figure out a, a way to, to do it otherwise. Of course. But that might, but, but that might be the story with the Bucks when we get to the, to the playoffs is their depth just isn't there. I feel much better about the Bucks now. But you, but it, but it might. We might get to that point where it's just, man, that offense. It just, it's great. That that team is great when they're five starters on the floor, but they just have nothing. They they have no help coming off the bench. At least no obvious help at this moment in particular. And it's not like you know they traded their draft picks. Now Milwaukee and and over at one ten sportsmedia dot com this morning went up a story about the the needs uh, that each team has in the NBA uh, ahead of draft night tonight. Uh, uh, it looks at every team with a pick, I believe. I don't think the Lakers in there, um, but every team with a pick. They've got the 60th pick, and and, and there have been reports that that's also going to, to the Pelicans. So it's not like they're going to be able to solidify that in this draft. But but you've secured Giannis. In theory, you've secured Giannis for the next five years. You've proven it to him. That you're invested. And you've got him for the next five years. And that's worth whatever you got to do, to be honest with you. That's worth whatever you got to do. They do get Justin James as part of the Kings deal. Justin James, the... The 40th overall pick in the 2019 draft. He played in 36 games, but averaged 2.5 points. There's not a whole lot, not a whole lot there to to look at. But they did get another guy, six seven, a small forward out of Wyoming. So you did get another body there. But then again, it's Justin James, right? Um, it's not that, it's not all that exciting. Uh, but that's the next biggest question for Milwaukee. But they they've now got a really in enticing pitch for uh, to throw at Giannis uh, to sign that Supermax when it soon becomes available to him. Coming up next, we're going to take a short break real quick um, and then come back with uh, some NBA draft talk. Uh, we'll talk about some of these, these picks up at the top. We'll talk about some of the things I'm looking at and just the fact that we'll we'll run through some of the most recent mock drafts with people that actually have the inside sources. Uh, But we'll do all of that next right here on the Jamal Show, 110sportsmedia.com.
Welcome back to the GML Show on a Wednesday. Twitch.tv slash 110sports, 110sportsmedia.com slash live. Thanks so much for joining us on a wild, busy, whatever words you want to use, day in the world of the NBA. We got the draft tonight. Woj is on top of things. Uh, we got mock drafts. Listen, uh, we'll, we'll start with this. The Knicks are moving up in Wednesday's NBA draft, acquiring the Utah Jazz pick at number 23 for the 27th and 38th picks tonight. Knicks are now picking at 23 and number 8. And I've seen on Twitter that 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 they, they might not be done. It might have been a. It might be a situation where they're trying to build up assets, trying to build up assets to to go and try to get five or six um, in the draft uh, instead of eight. Uh, the word is that Obi Toppin is the target that the Knicks are trying to move up and grab. For crying out loud, New York, just go draft Killian Hayes. Go draft a franchise point guard. Please, I'm begging you. Don't go get another guy who doesn't play defense. No offense to Obi Toppin. He's great. Good passer, good scorer, good shooter. High basketball IQ, explosive. But the dude can't defend, at least not yet. Go get Killian Hayes. Build your team around Killian Hayes. Mitchell Robinson is promising. RJ Barrett, solid rookie season. Go get a guy to be the point guard. Please. I'm begging you. Um, I don't know if that's what they're going to do. But I would like for them to go and do that. But the the Knicks, they're making moves for sure. Uh, trying to move up in this draft. You know, as of right now, we still have, I mean, still the Timberwolves at one, the Warriors at two, the... the uh, the Char the the Charlotte the Charlottes the Hornets at three the Bulls at four that's still where we stand in the draft order as of right now that could change prior to tonight but um let's let's take a look at that Jonathan Gavoni's ESPN uh, mock draft uh, that came out this morning updated on November eighteenth with the latest intel including lottery movement and new picks following the Knicks Jazz trade this morning. One, Anthony Edwards, I think that's probably who we're going to see called first tonight, followed by James Wiseman uh, to Golden State. I like that move a lot. Um, they need a guy who can impact winning now, but it doesn't have to be a guy on the offensive end. It can be, it can be a guy like James Wiseman who's going to run the floor really well. Which is what they, you know, which is helpful for sure, and as well as the guy who's going to help on the defensive end. And Wiseman is a freak athlete who is the best fit and and honestly probably the best pick there um three lamello ball to charlotte they need a star they need star potential and and that's probably the guy with the most star potential um he's obviously got some he, you know he could probably also be one of the biggest one of the higher percentage bust guys in the top five but i think it's a risk worth taking denny avdija uh Avdia, excuse me, um, to the Chicago Bulls. I like that as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, Gavoni saying that the NBA teams continue to struggle to get a handle on Chicago's intention with the pick. Um, they could possibly be selecting Patrick Williams from Florida State. That seems really high for that kind of guy. Um, Avdia's got size, versatility, great basketball IQ. He's got great role playing potential. That that puts him uh, any way that that puts him in a good spot for any NBA team. The Cavs at five drafting another high high ceiling offensive guy that's not a good defender. As long as it's not a combo guard, it's a step in the right direction. But them drafting Obi Toppin doesn't do their team favors in terms of the defensive end. I think a guy like Isaac Okoro. Uh, is a better choice here or a guy like Anyeko Kongwu um, who can be the guy of the future in 
uh, in the middle there, who's also a really good defender. I like him more than Wiseman, actually, in terms of his potential and what he could get to. I think, and he's the guy who reminds me the most of Bam Adebayo in this draft, and that's that's a good thing to remind people of Bam Adebayo. Uh, Okongwu at six to the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, I like that. Um, Detroit, Patrick Williams, New York, Tyrese Halliburton. I also like that. I, I, I don't – I would love to see Tyrese Halliburton go 10th to the Suns. I think that would be a really cool fit there. Um, he would also be good for, for New York. I'm just not sure he's going to be a starting point guard on the best team in the on – a, on a great team in the NBA. Uh, but he could be a very good backup point guard on a very good basketball team. Uh, and that would be, that would put him in a place to do it in in Phoenix rather than, but but that's not to say it's not a good fit for the Knicks. That's just I I, I like Halliburton and I'm uh, selfishly interested in seeing him succeed for no real reason. But I I would I, I feel like his place will ultimately be his role will be the difference for a very good team is that they have a very good backup point guard in Tyrese Halliburton who can play off the ball some with the lead guard and knock down shots. He can play defense. He's long, 6'5", very smart basketball player. Uh, at 9, Isaac Okoro to the Wizards. I don't think anybody's going to be upset with Okoro uh, uh, joining their team. The Sun, Sadiq Bay. we talked about that earlier. I like that a lot as well. Uh, Devin Vassell to the Spurs. Killian Hayes to Sacramento. I don't know why the Kings would do this. But if he drops to 12, like he, you're getting to the point where you might need to take Hayes. <laughs> like, like you might just need to take him because he could be that good. I mean, Kevin O'Connor has had uh, Hayes as the best player on his big board for a long time now. 13, Kira Lewis Jr. Somebody needs to... Um, Somebody, you know, I, I I need somebody who can shoot there. Um, Kira is a good shooter. He can do some sh distributing. Uh, it would be interesting to see how, uh, to, you know, Lonzo. It's weird because he's not a good shooter, but he's probably better when he's not the main creator. Um, we'll see about them. Boston, Jalen Smith at 14. I like that a lot. They need They need bigs, big time. Uh, Orlando, RJ Hampton. I, you know, I, I, I like the idea of Tyrell Terry going here. That's a little high for him, but Hampton's going to be exciting and they just need something, uh, to be excited about there. Houston, Preston Sachua. I like that. That was a recent trade that got Covington to, to Portland, uh, Tyrese Maxey to Minnesota. We'll just do the top 20 here. Dallas, uh, Dallas drafting Josh Green at 18. I really like that. Brooklyn drafting Aaron Smith at 19. Nesmith, sorry, at 19. Uh, the sharpshooter from Vanderbilt. I like that as well. Just get off-ball guys that can knock down shots um, in Brooklyn. Malachi Flynn to the Heat, which would be very interesting. Um, and, and we'll stop there at 20. It's going to be a very interesting night for multiple reasons. This is a weird draft because I think that, like, I like all of those players that I just mentioned. But I also, but I don't love the guys up at the top. Like, like it's one of those things where I love the fact that Sadiq Bay is, like, getting Sadiq Bay at 10 is awesome. Getting, you know, getting somebody like Josh Green at 18 for Dallas is awesome. But having to, you know, it's just a weird year to have a top three pick. For multiple reasons, but also just because I just am not sold on e any of these top guys being worth the number one pick. I'm just not completely sold on it. And that's, and, and maybe I'll be wrong, but it's one of those things where, where the draft is deep. It is. It's just, it, it, it's, it's one of those, there are a lot of, it, it's like a, it's like a college basketball conference that has a, 10 teams beating up on each other but the guy the team that finishes first you don't feel good about as one of the best teams in the country even though it's a gauntlet of a conference there are a lot of guys in here that i really like i just don't love the guys at the top 
I mean, if we scroll down to the back end of the, like Desmond Bain at 25, love that. Boston Celtics getting Trey Jones at 26, love that, that idea. I like that a lot. Um, Tyrell Terry, I, 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 I can't believe Tyrell's going to, with the type of game he plays, the fact that he's going to fall to 30th, that he could fall to 30th, according to Jonathan Gavoni, is, is crazy to me. Um, it's, there's just a lot of guys in this draft that I, that I like, even like, you know, the Warriors, if the Warriors walk away with Grant Ryler from Charleston, I like that a lot. Um, and that's the 51st pick, the 51st pick. There are a lot of guys in this draft. I like there's just, it's just weird at the top because I don't, I don't love I don't love the intangibles of any of the top three guys. I don't like Anthony Edwards' intangibles because he just doesn't show any effort on the defensive end. We talked about some of those quotes from a story I saw this morning. James Wiseman quit on his teammates at Memphis. He was one of the first players, you know, the first college basketball players ever to leave a team for a reason other than health to just go and prepare for the NBA draft. LaMelo, everyone knows the story about LaMelo and, and about, you know, the people he has around him, the fact that his dad is LeVar Ball, the fact that he just has a lot of really... <laughs> has a lot of... There are a lot of question marks. There are a lot of holes. And according to Gavoni, he's had some solid private workouts. Um, and it looks like he'll probably stay in the top three. But I just don't I, I don't have a ton of faith in any of those top three guys. Like I have faith in a guy that's drafted around 10, like Sadiq Bey. Like a guy who's going to be drafted in the, you know, the, the early 20s, late teens, like a Josh Green. Uh, who's going to come and play really good defense. And, and be a playmaker of sorts, knock down shots. Uh, Desmond Bain at 25, that might end up being the steal of the draft, to be honest with you, with his shooting range, his passing, his defense. He's, you know, they, that's great value at 25. So it's a weird draft because it's not a weak one. It's just not a, a, a high ceiling one, which there's a difference, right? There's a difference. And, and and it's just it, it's but it, it is weird to have to to look at it like that. But I'm excited. Remember tonight, 6:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Twitch.tv slash 110 Sports right here at the same place. Also 110sportsmedia.com slash live. Myself, Josh, Chris will be having a a NBA draft watch party, hangout, reaction kind of thing, and um. And we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a ton of fun, and you should uh, drop by if you want to to talk about all these things that we don't really know what is going to happen. Coming up next, we'll uh, do some FYI. I'm keeping a, an eye on on Woj, Shams, all of those guys, but we'll I'll continue to keep an eye on that. But we'll do, if nothing else, we'll do some FYI uh, and get out of here on a busy Wednesday in the NBA. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Twitch.tv slash 110sports. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Jamal Show on a Friday, Wednesday. I'm sorry. Sometimes I do that. Twitch.tv slash once in sports, once in sports media.com slash live. F Y I. Right now there's an odds boost on DraftKings plus 250 for the order of the top three to go Edwards, Wiseman, Ball. I think that's some good value there. Uh, if you. Uh, yeah, it might be worth jumping on there. For your information, talk you know, Woj is always right on cue. Woj just uh you know retweet it's actually Gavoni, sure it's out to Gavoni. Uh projected top ten pick on Yeka Okongu has fractured a left toe, a source told ESPN. The injury is considered minor, will require one to three weeks of rest, and is not expected to impact his draft stock or availability for the start of the season so it, it looks like you know if a team was planning to draft okongu at the start uh, uh you know before this report they'll probably still be wanting to draft him after this report i don't i don't expect that like he says to be a, a big deal it's it's a fractured toe it doesn't take very long to heal it happens and it's certainly not one of those that you can imply you know a history of of injuries uh, going forward. I, I don't think that's fair to, to a Congo and it doesn't look like it's going to impact his draft stock in any way for your information. A couple other things, a couple non uh, a, a couple non sports things. First of all, um, Pfizer, the, the, the company that said they had a 90% success rate with the coronavirus vaccine, uh, Launches a delivery program in four U.S. states, says the pharmaceutical company announced on Monday that Rhode Island, Texas, New Mexico, and Tennessee were chosen uh, were chosen to launch Pfizer's coronavirus immunization pilot program to help with planning, vaccine delivery, and development. According to the company, the states were chosen because of their differences in overall size, diversity of population, immunization infrastructure, as well as the state's need to reach individuals in varied urban and rural settings. You know, I think what's also interesting here is is I was reading up a little bit on this, and it says, you know, and it, it, this certainly makes sense, but says that, the four states will not receive vaccine doses earlier than any other states by virtue of the pilot, nor will they receive any differential consideration. Of course, that makes sense. There would be riot if they just picked four, four different, um, four states to get something before everybody else. Right? That wouldn't make any sense. There would be, there would be rioting. There was also, um, since we last spoke, um, I think Moderna. The, the other main pharmaceutical company that's been in the news about coronavirus vaccine uh, said something about a 95% uh, success rate with their, with their testing and their trials um, as well. So both good things. It's still, of course, not going to happen uh, super, super soon, but continue to see steps in the right direction. Theo Epstein steps down as Cubs team president. If you're a Cubs fan, this is a man that you hold in the highest of regards when it comes to how you feel about the people in and around the Cubs organization. He did something that he managed to put together a team that won a World Series, and that's something that a Cubs GM, a guy you know running the Cubs, has not been able to do for a very, very long time. Uh, so shouts to Epstein. It's, it's a great example of, you know, you step down now. You know, the Cubs are reaching that point in this uh in this run with this group, this core group of players that there's going to be unrest. There's going to be angry fan bases because you're not getting farther in the playoffs. There's going to be unhappy players. And it's a great com uh, commentary on leaving as a hero before you get a lot of flack for either trading a guy or for sucking or <laughs> whatever it might be. But uh, Theo Epstein will forever be a, a very, um, highly regarded part of the Cubs history as the guy who finally got it done uh, and finally got a World Series ring to the Cubs organization. Uh, last thing, again, tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, NBA Watch Party right here at 110sportsmedia.com slash live. We're going to talk 
about the picks that are made. Uh, we're going to talk about the draft. Uh, we're going to talk about what's still left on the board, how we feel about you know any movement that happens, all of it. We're gonna we're gonna break all of it down uh, on stream tonight. Please be there if. If uh, you need somewhere to come and chat about the draft. Uh, and then, of course, tomorrow, touch on talk with Josh Doring around the base of Chris Brown. Both of those will be live tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll be back on Friday. Uh, we'll talk about the draft, whatever happened tonight, and um, getting closer to free agency, maybe something with the Rockets and James Harden would have happened by then. We'll see. There's a ton of things that could happen between now and Friday. We'll talk about all of it. We'll talk about bets for the weekend, uh, what I'm looking at, some of the better college football games and NFL games over the weekend. We'll do it all. We'll break it all down. I'm excited about it. Please um, be there on Friday to, to join me in that journey. But uh, until then, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. I'll see you right back here, 110sportsmedia.com slash live on Friday.